Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a good week so far, staying healthy, staying strong. Hi, ENGR Kanzada. Hi, Janil Patel. Hi, Maksat. Nice to see some students in the class. Hi, Rahul Preet. Hi, Kyber. Good to see our members in the class as well. This lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. Get over 100 hours of video lessons, a fully interactive course, and original practice exams. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. And on both of these websites, you can use the code R. 4TYJ to get a 20% discount when you join the premium package. All right, students, uh, the websites, they look like this. This is the academic one here with the blue background. We'll use this today for our listening uh, session. You can click that big red button to join us there and for the general IELTS, it's the green background. Again, you can click that big red button. Hi, Eugen. I always love those emojis with the wave panda and cat. It's fantastic. Students, if you have questions about the IELTS exam or our products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly get back to you. Uh, I'm doing very well. Thank you, Eugene. I hope you're doing well also. All right, everyone. Uh, so listening part one and two right now, we're going to get into the listening very, very quickly here. Uh, tomorrow, members will have a task one for the academic IELTS for you, and then we'll have listening parts three and four tomorrow. Okay, so listening parts one and two today, listening parts three and four uh, tomorrow. So uh, I'm going to play the listening here in just one minute. Uh, in order to get the best experience, try to use a headset. If it's quiet for you, turn up the volume. Okay, this is uh, test number four, uh, listening section one that we're starting with. Uh, students, please do not write your answers into the chat. Um, write them into a separate document so that um, everybody has uh, a fair chance to answer on their own to the website audio CDs here. It'll be a bit for the moment because it's correct. And uh, so just uh, on a separate piece of paper, we will go through all of this together after. If the audio is unclear, we've had some shaky audio for this for some reason. I think it's, I think I've solved it. I think it was the um, Wi-Fi interference, but if you hear some poor audio, let me know. Okay, it means fuzzy audio, and I'll see what I can do. All right, so uh, here we go with uh, listening part one. Uh, do your best, and uh, we'll go through the answers together after and talk some strategy as well. Here we go. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think Long Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between a student and a university administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Listening. 
you will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Oh, hi there. Is this the University Registrar's Office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the University's Assistant Registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. The student says she has concerns about registration, so B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Oh, hi there. Is this the University Registrar's Office? Yes, it is. I'm Deborah Reed, the University's Assistant Registrar. What can I help you with today? Great. Thank you for seeing me today, Ms. Reed. I have a few concerns about my registration for the upcoming semester. Certainly. What can I help you with? Sorry, what was your name again, Ms? Anderson, Melanie Anderson. And well, my first question concerns my student record. I'm beginning my second year of uni, but my first didn't go so well. You're worried about your marks then, Ms. Anderson, and how they impact your registration status. Exactly. I don't know my precise average, but it is not good. Could you look into this for me? Absolutely. Could you please spell your last name for me? I've seen it spelt with either an E or an O in the final syllable. It's an E, A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. -E -E My family ancestry is Swedish. Right then. And the next piece of information I need is your student registration number. Okay, um, oh, it seems I've left my student identification with my registration number on it in the car. Can I give you some other piece of information or identification? Yes, you can. Along with your surname, I can find your account with your date of birth. Great. It's the 20th of August, 1997. The 20th of August, 1997? Yes, that's right. All right. Let's see your account then. Okay, here it is. Well, I see what you mean about your marks. These are certainly not ideal. However, your average is above the level necessary to proceed to year two of your programme. However, I do see there's a hold on your account which is preventing you from registering for classes. Yes. See, I thought that was because of my marks. No, it's not. It's actually because you have unpaid library fines. Library fines? Yes. During the past year, you must have been tardy in returning some items to the university library. Yes, I think I was. Hmm, hardly seems like a good reason to prevent a student from registering, though. I know how you feel, but books are expensive for the university library to acquire, and we must coerce students to pay fines one way or another. How much do I owe? Six pounds twenty. Six pounds twenty? Well, I suppose it's a relief the total is so small. You now have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Well, now that that is out of the way, I did have another concern. I need advice on what modules to take in my first semester. I'm in the BA Art History program, but as you can see from my record, I failed a class which is a prerequisite for two modules I'm supposed to take this semester. Yes, it looks like that's right. It was Art History 1270 that you failed. Is that right? One, two, seven, zero. Yes, I took it with Professor Calder. I found his teaching style did not match my learning style. Right. Well, that art history class is indeed a prerequisite for both art history 2170 and 2260. Yes, unfortunately, that's what I found out earlier. Is there anything that can be done? Well, Miss Anderson, I think there is. Here's what we'll do. We'll register you in the module you failed last year, and then we'll put you in art history 2240 which counts towards your degree in place of 2260. 2240 has no prerequisite, however. But what about the 2170 class? Yes, well, that's where we'll have to be creative. 
Are you comfortable taking an extra class in the spring semester? Yes, I think so. Good. We will register you in 1270 and 2240 in the fall, and then register you in 2170 in the spring. Great. And one final question. Is Professor Calder teaching Art History 1270 again this autumn? Yes, he is. But I've put you in Professor Hennessy's section instead. I think you'll be more successful. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students, and in that half minute, always use that time to check your answers. Make sure that you haven't made any silly little mistakes with spelling or the instructions or just a slight logic error. Now, students, you probably saw that what I did um, in the beginning here was uh, uh, when the audio started with the instructions, I kind of jumped ahead and I looked a little bit at um, uh, the uh, section two uh, topic and a little bit later on as well. This is kind of a little trick that you can sometimes do in the paper-based exam. You can kind of jump ahead and just flip the page and see what's going on. There is actually no hard rule that says you cannot do that, although it won't let you do that in the computer-based exam, and the rules say look at page one, but it doesn't say don't look at page two. So if the examiner or the proctor says, hey, don't turn the page, then don't turn the page, but otherwise just having a quick peek to see the topics of the other listening parts, that can kind of really help you to catch uh, some... Um, some points later on, okay? So if you can do it, um, then definitely try. If not, don't worry too much about it, okay? All right, so, uh, Rose, as I was mentioning, I'm using a speaker and a headset here for this listening, so if it's not loud enough for you, if it's not clear enough for you, use a headset or turn up the volume on your end, okay? All right, so let's go through these answers together. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit of strategy as we go along further. So here, uh, the student is in discussion with the registrar. Uh, which year of university is the student enrolled? First, second, or third? So what was it? A, B, or C? And the student here says, well, I'm in my and you see. Okay. Tamonish, I hope you'll get a good mark on that IELTS that you just completed yesterday. All right. So what was the answer for question number one? Who got that? Let's see who picked up on it. Rahul Preet says, I think number one was A. Charlie says B. Tamonish says good. Kyber says B. Um, yeah, the correct answer was B. So she's in her second year, okay? So the correct answer was B. Uh, here's a tip, students. If you ever have trouble, check the transcripts, okay? So if you ever have difficulty figuring out the uh, answer, this is my first tip for today, okay? Tip, if you are having trouble figuring out answers. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Figuring out answers. Uh, check the transcripts, which um, is basically the script at the back of the book. Scripts, what's going on with my typing? Transcripts, okay, check the transcripts. So I'll show you what I mean. In this case, the transcripts are at the back of the book here um, at page 110. So let's see here, uh, 110. And uh, this is what I mean by transcripts. So every good IELTS book will have actual script at the back of the book. And uh, if you have some study partners, 
Uh, here's another really good tip for you is practice uh, the scripts and partners. So uh, one of you can be Melanie in this case. One of you can be Deborah. I saw a couple of you were looking for some speaking partners uh, there as well. I saw a Korean name. Um, and you can use these kind of transcripts as kind of a speaking practice script. So Deborah says, I'm Deborah Reed, the university's assistant registrar. What can I help you with today? And then um, Melanie answers. And here Melanie says, uh, Anderson, Melanie Anderson. And well, my first question concerns my student record. I'm beginning my second year of uni. So there's your answer for question number one. I'm beginning my second year of uni. If she's beginning her second year of uni, it means she's in second year, okay? So that's where uh, the B comes from. All right. So let's get back to these other answers. So again, uh, use the transcripts. They can be very, very helpful in your learning and uh, also improving your active listening. Okay, uh, question number two was a bit tricky. So question number two asks, what is the student concerned about most? So what is the student concerned about most? Is it her marks, her registration status, or her identification? A, B, or C? It was a little bit tricky. Okay, try to focus students, otherwise I'll start putting some people on timeouts. Okay, so number two is, according to Rahim B, her registration status. Uh, Charlie says B as well. Jaha says C. Uh, Kyber says B for sure. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky one. Um, she's concerned about her registration status. And again, uh, in the transcripts, you will read that she says something like, um, I'm concerned about my marks and how they impact my registration status. So she's worried that she cannot register for her classes. So B is the correct answer in this case. She's concerned about her marks, but she's concerned most about her registration. She's afraid that she cannot register uh, for the classes that she needs, okay? So pay very close attention. This comes up a couple times. Uh, you will hear these kinds of answers usually twice, and in this case, you hear it twice as well, okay? And the administrator says to you, oh, you're concerned about your registration. Okay, um, so then uh, questions three to five, this was some information about the student. Uh, so that the uh, registrar can look up what the problem or what the issue is for her registration. Uh, pay really close attention here. No more than three words and or a number. So her name is Melanie something. Um, what was her name? She spells it for part one and part two. They almost always give the spelling. So wait for the spelling. Okay. So what was the... What was the name of Melanie? What was her family name or her surname? Okay. What was her surname? And again, a name should start with a capital. Okay, proper nouns uh, start with capital letters. Anderson, according to Rahul Preet, Kyber Rahim agree, and it was. It's Anderson. Okay, so Anderson spelt with an E because she's Swedish. She says Anderson spelt with an E. So yeah, it was Melanie Anderson. Now, um, for listening uh, and reading, you can write all capital letters. So you can write it like this. Okay, so that's fine. Um, and you can do that, and that's okay, and that's good. Uh, this is a little bit slower than writing it with um, small letters as well, okay? Uh, here's a tip that I've really been meaning to give to students for a long time now, and I maybe I just haven't expressed myself on this, but I'm going to do it now. So tip, um, it's okay if you use all capital letters 
for your answers in the listening and reading sections. Okay, so that's fine. However, and this is my big um, caution or word of caution or caveat here, is however, you must learn your use of capital letters for what's called proper nouns in English because your task one and task two essays must use correct upper and lowercase letters. Okay, so even if um, you're able to be a little bit tricky and save a couple marks in the listening and reading because you're using all capital letters, if you're not using proper nouns, okay, the key word here is proper nouns correctly in your task one and task two, you're going to lose marks there. Okay, so definitely learn proper nouns and you can Google it. It's not that difficult, students. Um, I mean, if you have a good intermediate level of English, learning proper nouns is not the end of the world. Okay, so Google uh, proper nouns in English. It's worth learning it. Um, so, for example, names, dates, uh, uh, days, okay, and specific locations, titles, okay? Uh, those are proper nouns. So the name Anderson is a proper noun, therefore it takes a capital A. If you write the word September, September is a month, it's a date, it takes a capital S. Uh, days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a proper noun, it takes a capital letter. Specific locations like Budapest, where I'm streaming from, it takes a capital letter. Okay, so learn your proper nouns. Uh, otherwise, you will be in trouble eventually, if not in the listening and reading. Plus, it's faster. Okay, it's faster and uh, it's easier to spell words as well. Okay, so learn your proper nouns. Google it. Ask Mother Google to help you. Okay, uh, here we go. So, uh, back to point, um, birthday, when is Melanie's birthday? Okay, so when is Melanie's birthday? When is she born? Uh, they give you the year, so you only need the month and the day. And of course, the registrar is using this information to find her information. Okay, uh, Preeti Anderson was spelt with an E at the end, Anderson, okay. All right, so when was Melanie born? What's her date of birth? What was her date of birth? I think there might be a little bit of a lag in our live uh, session today because the answers are coming really uh, slowly after I ask for them. It's either that or students are not really focusing. Yeah, for Yuzo Beck says August 20. Shirojidin says August 28th, but most students are saying August 20. And the easiest way to write it is how Rahim Mirzada is doing it. Rahim Mirzada says all you really need to do, students, is go Aug 20. And that's correct. I mean, to be on the safe side, I like to put a little dot after the abbreviation. Uh, again, capital A, as I just mentioned, it's a proper noun. So, AUG20, okay? That's the easiest, fastest. You do not need the TH superscript, okay? It's unnecessary. Um, all right, library fines due. So, it's not actually because of her marks, but it's because she has to pay library fines. Now, for those of you who are going to study in U.S., Canada, I'm sure it's like that in many other countries as well. If you don't pay your library fines in university, they won't let you register. Um, she owes, according to Bisser, six pound twenty, and that's exactly it. Okay, you don't need the word pounds because you have the symbol included in the question. So just six twenty. 
That's all you need. 6.20. Here the dot is definitely important. Don't forget that. Otherwise, it's 620 pounds, which is a very different story. All right. Good job. Let's keep moving along. So again, question six, short answer, no more than three words for each one. Uh, what program is the student in? So here, someone says, oh yes, I see you're enrolled in the, and she says, yeah, I'm in the, so I think again, it's given to you twice here. Um, and uh, you need a nice full answer here. Friesobeck says art history. Uh, Bisser, very good. It's an accurate answer. BA art history. So if you write BA art history, that's correct. You're definitely on the safe side. Here, if you don't say BA, you just say that that's correct too. But if you say BA, which is Bachelor of Arts, Art History, that's also correct. They'll only count that as one word, Bachelor of Arts, Art History. The reason why is because sometimes all we do is we write BA like that. We don't actually put the dots. It's just used as a BA. We say BA Art History, okay? So Art History, BA Art History, both are okay. All right, uh, again, this is the title. Remember what I said with proper nouns. So this is the title of the program. So it takes a capital A and a capital H because it's the name of the program that she's enrolled in. So it's capitalized. All right. Now, this is an interesting type of question in the listening. You have to match the class with the number, okay? So pay really close attention to these numbers. Now, in the U.S. or Canada, we would say 2170 or 1270, but in the U.K. and England for the classes, they actually say the full 2170, 1270. There's some cultural differences here. Um, and you had to match it. Taken and failed will take in the spring, not taken at all. So number seven, is it A, B, or C? Number seven, 2170. What is the correct answer for that? So here you'd have to, so this is three questions here in your answer key. Don't be fooled. So what is it going to be? 2170. I'll give you guys a really good hint here. If um, the number of the class starts with a two, it means that it's a second year class, okay? If it starts with a one, it means that it's a first year class. And you probably guessed it. If you have a class that's like three, four, two, zero, this would be a third year class. Okay, and this is the same in uh, most, if not all universities. If you have one that starts with a four, like four, two, seven, zero, that would be a fourth year. And if you have one that starts with a five, like five, seven, nine, two, this would be a graduate class for masters or PhD. Okay, and you'll have one more uh, in your syllabus when you're choosing your classes in university that'll start with a zero, like zero, two, one, three. This will be a prerequisite class or high school equivalent, usually grade 12 level. Okay, so just to not confuse you here, when you're looking at course numbers in your syllabus for universities. When you see uh, classes start with a zero, it usually means it's a grade 12 level prerequisite class that you might need to take if you didn't do it in high school. Then you'll have first year classes starting with the one, second year with the two, uh, third year with the three, fourth year with the four, and graduate level classes with the five. So that's uh, just kind of an interesting uh, little side note there for all of you planning to go to school. And all of those students who answered B for number seven, you're correct. So um, she will take it in the spring. She's enrolled in second year, so it makes logical sense. Number eight, 
Uh, Remas al Shahari al Shahrani says uh, number eight is uh, A, taken and failed. That's correct. And of course, you have only one left now. It's C. Uh, you'll get that correct as well. Uh, not taking that at all. Okay. Again, if you got confused during this part, go back to the transcripts and see what was said. So the correct answers are 7B, 8, uh, A, 9, C. Okay, um, let's look at the last question. So the last question is, choose the correct letter A, B. It's a 50-50. Don't overthink it. The student is registering for 127 with the same professor as she previously had. Is that true or false? So you had to infer this one. Is she registering with, uh, is it true or is it false? Uh, the correct answer is B, false. Okay, it's not true. It's B, false. Um, the, uh, the woman says, yeah, he's teaching the class again, but I'll put you into another class with a different professor. So the correct answer here is B. Uh, students, be really careful. If you put false into the answer key, you'll get that marked wrong. So you have to put the letter, okay? You have to put the letter B. Don't accidentally write false. Uh, that's sometimes confusing because people will write like um, uh, true, false, not given. So they're thinking false, 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 and they'll put false in the answer key. But if you write false, they'll mark, mark it wrong. So you have to put the letter, okay? Choose the correct letter, not write true or false, okay? So be very careful with that. Okay, always pay attention to the instructions. Okay, uh, so far so good. Uh, students, what did you get out of 10? Okay, so this is your part one score. How did you do? What did you get? Bebek Tamang says, I got nine. Bebek, that's fantastic. Throw you a thumbs up. Very good job, Bebek. All right, Tamir Khan says nine. Frizo Beck says nine as well. If you're getting nine, that's fantastic. So one wrong on uh, part one is nothing to be ashamed of. It's a fantastic score. Um, your goal is to get somewhere between eight to 10 on part one. You don't really want to get less than eight. In fact, I'd be shooting more for nine, okay? So um, part one is supposed to be the easiest part. Uh, so if you're losing a lot of marks in part one, you're gonna be in big trouble. Uh, when it comes to the rest of the listening. So if you're getting less than eight in part one, really work hard, students, to improve your active listening. I highly recommend using our courses and our apps uh, to help you use that code. Spend a couple dollars, save yourself a lot more stress and money in the long run. Um, all right, everyone. So let's go to part two. So of course, uh, I gave you a little hint of what part two is about. We took a little peek at that. Okay, so it's some kind of a tour. Okay, so how long will the tour be? Uh, I'll make the screen a little bit darker for this one because we have a, a diagram type question as well. So um, I'll darken up the screen a little bit. Again, students, as we listen to uh, part two, uh, don't put your answers into the chat. Just uh, keep it on a separate piece of paper and we'll go through it together after, okay? So here we go with uh, part two of the uh, listening. Again, this is coming from our website and this is exam number four. Uh, here we go, listen and answer, just not in the chat. We'll go through it after. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening Section two, you will hear a woman showing a group of people around an all-inclusive resort hotel. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview. 
and answer questions 11 to 16. I'd like to welcome all of you to the White Sands Five Star Resort here in beautiful Veradero, Cuba. Today, I'm going to show you the fine features you'll get to experience during your stay here at White Sands. Before we begin, does anyone have any questions? Hi there. Yes, I have a quick question. How long will the tour be? I have to meet the rest of my family for lunch in an hour. Not a problem, sir. The tour will take no more than 30 minutes. If after this time anyone wants more details on any of the resort's features, I can help them out individually. Any other questions? No? Well, let's get started then. White Sands covers 10 acres of land, including direct access to over 250 metres of pristine Caribbean coastline. It is perfectly safe to swim in the waters here at White Sands, but do be on the lookout for jellyfish in the water. They are not deadly, but their sting does pack a punch. As we pass through the lobby, I want you to take note of the main bar area on your left. The bar is open from 11 in the morning each day and closes at 1 o'clock a.m. each night. As we proceed down the main path, you'll see four apartment buildings, marks A and B on your left, and C and D on your right. Between buildings C and D on your right is one of our finest restaurants featuring traditional Cuban cuisine. We have seven restaurants in all at White Sands, and we invite you to try your favourites while you are here. I have a question. Go ahead. In our brochure, I read that we are only entitled to five restaurant visits per week we stay at the resort. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The restaurants are only open for dinner, and reservations are mandatory. You will be able to make reservations at the end of this tour or any time before five this evening. When you are not dining at our a la carte restaurants, you may eat at either of our two buffet restaurants, which are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Additionally, there is a night cafe, which is open until 4 a.m. Does the resort have a nightclub for dancing? Yes, of course. We have a discotheque located at the end of the main resort path, further away from the apartments. This is, of course, for noise reasons. In fact, the discotheque is conveniently located next to the night cafe. And what are the discotheque's hours? It opens at 8 in the evening and closes at 3 a.m. early the next morning. Last call for drinks is at 2.45. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. Next, I'd like to take you down to the beach and show you some of the facilities and services we offer. As we approach the beach, you'll notice the brilliant white sand that our resort is named after. The sand is incredibly fine and is lovely to walk on in your bare feet. Now you can see to your left is one of our beach bar facilities. There is also another beach bar about 100 meters to your right. These bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until 4.30 in the afternoon. On your right is a small cafe serving snack food items during the same opening hours as the beach bar. And straight ahead of us is our beach changing facility, where you can change into your swimming costume, use the toilet or have a shower. Are there any water sports included in our holiday package? Good question. Yes, there are. You have unlimited access to our skim boards, surfboards and beach sports equipment, such as beach volleyball and football. Additionally, you may sign up for windsurfing at our activity desk, located adjacent to the resort lobby. Finally, you may also register for our weekly water polo tournament, which is held each Friday afternoon at half past two. Does anyone else have any? That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And again, students, check those answers in that half minute. Just going to stop the audio here and go back, and uh, we'll uh, answer these questions together. I'll brighten up our lives here for the first few questions. And uh, let's do this. So question number 11, approximately how long will this tour be? Um, a gentleman at the beginning is, uh, of course, a little bit worried that... Uh, He's not going to be able to meet his family for lunch in an hour. Uh, so is it a quarter of an hour? Is it an hour or half an hour? A, B, or 
C for number 11. What was the correct answer there? How long is this tour of this resort? Hopefully everybody realized that they're listening to a resort tour. Parizo Beck says C, about half an hour. Um, uh, Zaid Nawafa says C, and you're both correct. Yeah, the audio, they say 30 minutes. And of course, 30 minutes is a half hour. So the correct answer is C. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well done. Um, now, questions 12 to 15. The order doesn't matter here. It was a little bit trickier. This is one of those multi-multiple choice questions. So it's a good idea to write down the answers as you hear them. It's a little bit easier than trying to find them in the choices really quickly. Um, so what were the four correct answers here? And again, the order doesn't matter. So it's 12, 13, 14, 15, um, and you had eight choices. So half of these are wrong. Uh, what were the right choices? Does the uh, resort have a night cafe? Does the resort have deadly jellyfish? Give me all four of them. So give me all four correct answers. I think there's a little bit of lag here, even though I've set it to minimum. So Jack Patel says it's B-D-A-H. Rahim says it's D-H-G-A. Yeah, the four apartment buildings for sure, right? Um, she says, oh, we have four buildings, lay uh, A and B on your left and C and D on your right. So that was correct for sure. A lot of you are saying A. That's fantastic. Yeah, the resort has a night cafe. She says there's a night cafe. So a night cafe is definitely one of them. And the other two correct answers were E and, of course, no surprise, G. So there are a number of restaurants and direct beach access. So you can go directly to the beach. Bonus question. Uh, how many restaurants? <coughs> how many restaurants? Anybody catch that? So a number of restaurants means several, right? Uh, bonus question. How many restaurants? So how many for E? And this is your active listening when you go above and beyond just getting the answer and thinking about, yeah, okay, how many was that? And being able to answer that, um, then you'll be on the right path. So D, A, E, G, those are correct answers. How many restaurants? Anybody catch that? She actually says the number of restaurants in the end. Okay. And there's no deadly jellyfish. A lot of students make the mistake. They think deadly jellyfish. She says they're not deadly. Okay. They're not deadly. Yeah. So, um, she says any of our five a la carte restaurants. So there are five restaurants. Yeah. Five of them. Pretty good for those of you who got that. Okay. Good. Uh, fantastic. So sometimes difficult, uh, these questions again, Listen for the answers, jot them down like notes. Uh, what time is the last call of the discotheque? Last call means the last chance to buy alcohol. So is it at 8 p.m., 2.45 a.m. or 3 a.m.? Again, you have to choose the letter A, B, or C. So when is the last chance for people in the nightclub, in the disco, to buy a drink? Is it A, B, or C. Hopefully, you got the right answer here. The answer was, again, a lot of B's in this one. It was B. Okay, so B was the correct answer. Okay, 245, 245. Uh, Rajveer Singh, our new member. There were five restaurants. Uh, students, if you're, again, if you're not sure about those, check the transcripts. Okay, check the transcripts. Uh, two, if there were, there were two restaurants, they would say couple of restaurants. All right, so careful with that. Okay. Uh, number 16 is B. It's 245. 
Okay, very good for those of you who got it. Uh, she said, last call for alcohol is quarter to three, quarter to three. All right, now this one here, it was a little bit tricky for me. I couldn't fit all four diagrams into one eye shot. That's why I was trying to help you as much as possible, and it's a little bit bright, so I'm uh, darkening up our world here. Um, so basically here, the audio, the woman describes where the beach bars are and where the cafe is. And uh, the correct answer for this one, hopefully you got it, was actually D. So she said, uh, here we are at the entrance. Always listen carefully for the location of where these people are. And then uh, she says, you'll see a beach bar to the left, a beach bar to the right, and a cafe to the right. Okay, so be very familiar with perspective. So the perspective is here at the entrance, okay? So you have to be very careful there. The correct answer was D, D, okay? I tried to uh, move and shift this around a little bit so that you could see that. And then the answers were coming really quickly after 17 for this summary. So you kind of had to keep the answers in your head um, I actually got to this a little bit late. Uh, so this is a summary completion or completing the information. The beach bars serve beer and cocktails from noon until 4.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Okay, now you don't need the p.m. because you have in the afternoon. So hopefully you got that even if I didn't get to it in time. And then it says, in addition to the small cafe on the beach, we also offer a changing, now in the U.S. or Canada, they'll say changing, uh, I'll brighten up our day here, uh, they'll say changing room, okay, so if you're in U.S. or Canada, ask for the change room or the changing room, um, but in the U.K., in Britain, they'll say changing facility, okay, changing facility okay and uh, of course uh, that will be your correct answer changing facility um, and it's a uh, so don't use the plural okay where you can change in and out of your swimming costume uh, again in the UK and Britain they'll say swimming costume in Canada in the US will say swimming suit I'm not sure about Australia I think they say swimming suit as well Okay, uh, we also offer plenty of sports at the resort, whether it's skimboarding, beach volleyball, football, windsurfing, or our once a week water polo. That was a bit of a tricky one. Some people are not familiar with this sport, but it's water polo tournament. That's where you're swimming in a pool and people are throwing around a ball. Uh, water polo tournament, we have activities uh, for everyone. Okay, Okay. so changing a facility, 430, water polo. All right. Okay, students, so uh, that's it for part two uh, and part one for this listening exam. Tomorrow at the same time, we'll do uh, part three and part four so you can get the full experience, and I'll give you some more strategies uh, so what was your total score out of 20 for that? What did you get? Uh, Rajveer says, I got 18 out of 20. That's really good, Rajveer. 18 out of 20 is a solid performance for part one and two. Uh, Nick NNP, uh, 17 is still good. Uh, Bisser, 16, he's saying not great, but not terrible. It's okay, yeah, Bisser, 16 is acceptable, okay? So ideally, students, uh, for part one and part two, your goal is to get between 16 to 20, okay? Why? Because if you get 16 to 20 for part one and part two, it, those students usually lose about eight to 10 marks for part three and part four, okay, that are much more challenging. So you want to definitely try to get 16, okay? Aikan 12 is a little bit low, okay? It's a little bit low. Naman, Verma, 14, Janil Patel, 14. It's a little bit low, okay? You want to shoot for at least 16 for these, 
All right. You can get all six of our practice exams with audio. Uh, there's also audio for the reading sections that we include as well. For general IELTS, it's at gieltshelp.com. For academic, it's at aehelp.com. And you can use the code R4TYJ to get a 20% discount. Plus, you'll get all of our HD videos with no advertising, strategies for every section, an interactive course. You'll get an app that you can use as well. So definitely uh, check that out. Uh, that's it for today. Tomorrow, members, task one and uh, parts three and four for the listening at the same time tomorrow. So two classes tomorrow as well. Okay. And again, check us out on our websites. Do yourself a favor, spend a couple bucks, get some great band scores. That's all for now. Much love to all of you. I'm Adrian signing out from beautiful Budapest. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.